Hi everyone, today Zion and I are gonna go over how to correctly perform a compression test on an engine. So on my Z3, I have a failed head gasket and the compression test is gonna help us identify which cylinders may be directly affected. An engine makes power by compressing vaporized fuel in the combustion chamber. This can be measured using a compression gauge that is screwed into the spark plug hole. When piston rings wear out, the compression required to efficiently burn the air fuel mixture is drastically reduced. A compression test is designed to check the condition of the valve train and the piston rings. That's the upper and lower end and give you a general idea of what's going on inside the engine. The valves need to close correctly, both the intake and the exhaust, in order to build compression and the piston rings need to seal the cylinder from the lower crankcase. I'm gonna go over all the steps you need in order to do a successful compression test. All right, so we have to remove the spark plug. So on a BMW Z3 or any vehicle with the M54, we have to take the vanity cover off. So I'm just gonna take that plug off right there. Under here are 10 millimeter nuts that we're just going to take off. I would recommend that you watch this video from beginning to end before you do a compression test on your own vehicle. This is also going to give us some great information on what's going on inside of this Z3 M54 engine. Now on your vehicle, you may want to warm it up before you do this step. It is a recommended step. I don't want to warm this up because I know I have a head gasket problem. You do have to remove all of the coils which in most cases are pretty self-explanatory. On this particular car, this lifts up, slides out, take the two 10 millimeters out, and the coil is removed. I'm gonna do that with the rest. Quick little tip here, if you're chasing a misfire and you're taking your coils out, go ahead and number them. That's number one, and number this one as two, three, four, five, and six. That way I know where they came from. I have the coils removed, but it's very important. You need to disable fuel somehow. So on this particular vehicle, the fuse box is located right here in the engine compartment. And if I look here on my diagram, it does tell me that the fuel pump is 13 and 18. So if I look here, this is 11 to 20. So this would be 11, 12. 13 is here, so we want to take off this 5, that's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is this open hole, and 18 is this blue one right here. So I want to remove that one, and I want to remove this 5. Now you can also take your fuel pump relay off if you know which one it is, that or go right to the fuel pump and unplug it. Now if you don't disable your fuel system, all you're gonna be doing is spraying fuel into your new compression gauge. You can cause it to fail. Not to mention you have vaporized fuel blowing around at you in your face. If there was a spark or something that happened, you could actually cause a fire. So make sure to disable your fuel system. The next step on this BMW is use a 5 8 spark plug socket and remove all the spark plugs. Now you don't wanna just remove one spark plug, you need to remove them all. Otherwise your engine is fighting the compression from the other cylinders. We want a good reading. So you actually have to remove all of the spark plugs and not just one when you're doing a compression test. Now I wanna mention the spark plugs themselves could have some really good information on them. And it is a good idea just to take a look. Now there's this is just some oil I believe. The spark plug itself is just black, a little wet looking. So that could be coolant. I guess we're gonna take, take the other ones off and continue and see. Another tip, make sure to number them. This is number one. You can write it there or if you want you can write it on the metal part. Looks about the same. All right, all six out, and tell you the truth, there really is not much of a smoking gun on any of these spark plugs. If you see one that looks like it's steam cleaned, well, that could be a coolant leak through uh, the cylinder head. But all of these are pretty dark looking in general, so they should be replaced anyways. They probably did a lot of short distance driving with this car. I think that's why they look this way. It is a good idea to have a battery charger on the car. And I'm just gonna put some tape over this spot right here because technically this would be a direct 
short the power right to the battery because that's my jump terminal. We're looking for a specific area that might be a problem and a compression test is going to give us that information because we're going to compare the values between all six cylinders. Now, if my memory serves me right, I believe an M54 compression is about 210, give or take a little bit. And all cylinders should be within about 10% of each other. So as a general rule of thumb, you can use the 10% rule as compared to each other, and it should be at least over 100 PSI. So let's just say this one was 80 and this one was 180. We would definitely see a discrepancy between the two cylinders. What's nice about a generic kit like this is it usually comes with multiple adapters and you just can match up exactly what it is. This is 517 by three and a half. So this one right here, you can kind of match it up, check your thread just by putting it against each other. That's good. And you should not have a problem screwing this in. And we're gonna start with cylinder one, go down to two, three, four, five, and six. And we're gonna log the information. This should catch nice and easy. Shouldn't be hard to screw this in. If, there, if it is hard to screw it in, stop. It might be that the thread is not correct. And gently snug. It's the O-ring on the bottom of the tool that's doing the sealing. And on this particular one, this is a pass-through and my Schrader valve that holds in my pressure is here on this end. So you're going to take your compression gauge out and it's very simple. This plugs in right here and we're about ready to go. So it's good to make sure you log everything and all of your readings. It's nice to have a second person who can watch the gauge. That, a lot of times that first initial compression stroke that you see is some good information and an indicator of either a good engine or a problem in that specific cylinder. But you guys are gonna have to watch it for me. I'm gonna go over and crank the vehicle. Now you always wanna be consistent when you're cranking the engine over. I like to do five revolutions. Make sure you have nothing in the way of the fan in the front because the engine is going to be cranking over. I like to do five revolutions, so count to three to five. I like five, which gives me a very good reading. So you guys are gonna watch from this end and then I'll have to just re-watch the video to see what those readings look like. So cylinder one is only 140. After your test, press this little tab and it purges the compressed air. So then you move it to the next cylinder. It's a lot lower than I expected. I was hoping that I was gonna see a higher number. I said I remember 210 for some reason being a good value on this engine. Let's see what cylinder two produces. Ay caramba. 60, 70, not even, not even 80. So that's like 75 PSI on cylinder two. That is not happy. Cylinder three. And I thought cylinder two was bad. Oh my goodness. Here's our reading so far, 140, 75, and 40. Now I would kind of expect that because the hottest part of the engine is gonna be right in the center. And I would imagine that the most compromised area is going to be towards the center of the engine. So cylinder four was also 40 PSI. Let's see if the pressure goes back up as we approach cylinders five and six. Wow, 50 PSI, we're moving up. I was almost thinking the issue was my gauge, but there we go on cylinder six. We almost hit 120, it's more like 110. Let me just go over real quick, when would you wanna do a compression test? Well, if you're having smoke from your exhaust, poor acceleration issues, or your vehicle's sluggish, 
you have misfire issues and you've ruled out your coils and your plugs, if you're getting poor fuel economy and you've also ruled out air leaks and other check engine light issues that you might have, or if you're adding more oil than normal, you're going to want to check the piston rings and this would be one way to do that test. Or in my case, I want the general health of the engine and this is going to give me that information that I need. So these values kind of give me a map of what's happened. I would expect the front of the engine to be a little bit cooler. You would have ram air effect coming through and blowing through. You'd have the fan blowing through. So this part of the engine usually would stay a little bit cooler. My value was 140 going down to 75. Really bad in the center is kind of what I would expect. That's going to be the hottest part of the engine and then a little bit cooler in the back. So this is where all of my heat dissipation was and I think this is where my main problem is going to be but this can only give you so much information but there is one more step to check your piston rings let me go over that now if you're suspecting that your piston rings might be worn out or you have a problem on the bottom end you would actually just add a capful of oil to that cylinder and redo the compression test that seals the rings with the oil and the compression should go up cylinder 3 was only 40 psi so we're going to try cylinder three, so just a small amount of oil. I'm just going to pour it down. It's going to find its way into that cylinder. And if you put too much, you're going to fill up your gauge with oil. We don't want to do that. We just want to put cap full in and we'll redo the compression test. All right, so here we go. We're going to go back into cylinder three. And if my values increase a lot, that could indicate that I have a problem with my piston rings and I would have to get an engine overhaul or replace the engine depending on the situation at hand and if it was and if you're able to fix a particular engine so in cylinder 3 we were 40 now we're actually 70 which is still well below what it should be so why did it go up slightly well the engine's not running correctly because of the head gasket issue. The cylinder walls could actually be washed down with fuel and adding the oil revitalizes the cylinder walls and does some of the sealing, but this is not what it should be. So if you had a piston ring problem, this should go up to what it should read, 180 to 210 and not stay so low. So I still have an internal problem on this. What this does not tell me though, is if my top end is sealing properly. That's a completely different test. That's called a cylinder leakage test and we can check the top end using that test. A cylinder leakage test, when the valves close and they seat both the intake and the exhaust are closed and you have to rotate the engine while you're actually doing this test, when those valves close correctly, you will get a certain percentage of leakage that you would get and you can actually hear where that air is coming from. It could be going into an adjacent cylinder if you had a bad head gasket. It could be going into the bottom end and that would be through the ring so you know you have a ring problem. Or it could be going through a valve seat and you'll hear it in the intake or the exhaust. So that also is a very good test to do. This is a cylinder leakage tester and this is going to be an upcoming video. So this is some really great information as I move forward with removing the cylinder head and trying to see where my failure is and can I actually repair this engine. That's the big question. Is it repairable? In the next video, we're going to get some great information using the cylinder leakage tester and I'm going to show you exactly how to use that tool as well. Realistically, when you're doing engine testing like this, you want to do a compression and a cylinder leakage test. Some of it is overlap because the spark plugs are already removed. I have to do some additional steps removing the fan because I want to be able to get down at the crank because I need to turn the engine over by hand to get the valves to close correctly while doing the cylinder leakage test. Now that you know how to do a compression test, if you're interested in doing this on your own vehicle and need to pick up a compression tester, I'll put a link right up here in the corner in case you want to grab one. That does help me out with Amazon affiliates, so it's greatly appreciated if you use the links to my affiliate marketing. Well, Zion and I are not too happy with the results, but it's kind of what is expected on this. We're, we have a lot to do still on this beautiful Z3. Uh, the body is amazing, and I bought it with, I knew, a failed motor. So the idea is, can I bring it back, or do I actually have to replace this engine? 
and I want you to join me through the entire process. Science says like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get more notifications on when I post new repair and BMW videos. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. So you want to go for a walk? Oh, that got him up. Let's go.